Hey guys, so in my last few videos I was setting up Apollo Cogen which allowed me to get easily the TypeScript types for my front end with React and it made it very easy to set up the types for them. And what I wanted to do is also set this up on the back end so my resolvers also had this so I would know the type of my arguments and I could easily know what I can and cannot do with them. And so the first thing I was looking at to help me out with this was something called GraphQL uh, Prepare. So this is something that comes with uh, the GraphQL CLI. That's this thing over here. Um, so I tried setting this up in my project and it did not work how I think uh, or I thought it would work. So the first thing I did is I did uh, GraphQL init and it created this little dot GraphQL config file and I pick the YAML configuration so it looks like this and uh, I added this bit at the end here um, the prepare bindings this is the setting you need to do to set up for GraphQL prepare and by the way I was trying this out on my uh, uh, TypeScript boilerplate server that I have set up and so I also by the way installed the GraphQL CLI and we can take a look. You just do npm install GraphQL CLI. And then to generate this file, I did GraphQL init. And then I manually added this right here. And you can see I tried running GraphQL prepare like this uh, on the command line and got no luck with it. But uh, if you put the settings in this in the .config file, it seems to work better. So I also moved my schema over to a .graphql file instead of just writing it in a string. So I just copy and pasted the schema. And so I wanted to basically have GraphQL prepare create the types that I needed from this. So after I set those two things up, I was able to run GraphQL prepare without any arguments and it would go ahead and create uh, some stuff. So the two key arguments that I'm passing in are the schema path and that's to the schema and then the output is the folder here generated Prisma and it took me a little to figure this out uh, the reason it's called Prisma here is because I actually copied this from the default Prisma configuration and uh, here's the generator so I want TypeScript bindings and uh, binding instead of Prisma if we take a look at the prepare over here we can see there's a couple other uh, options we can choose JavaScript or Prisma. We don't care about Prisma. We're just going to be using a regular GraphQL server. So I picked TypeScript since I'm using TypeScript. Okay, so here is what it generated. Um, and it doesn't actually seem to be all that useful. Uh, at least I'm not sure how to add it. So I didn't even bother. Uh, it looks like I have to install GraphQL binding to get it to work as well. And here's really the main export down here is this thing called a binding class. And uh, it has a query and the mutations in it. But you can see it does go ahead and uh, create all the types. But, and we have this now schema. But I'm not really sure how to use this. And this could be because I'm new to TypeScript. So let me know if you guys know how to apply uh, the types that uh, it creates. But I wasn't really sure how to basically uh, set the types for this. So here are all my resolvers right here. And the other thing is a lot of times when you're doing this, you split up your resolvers into mul multiple files, right? So it assumes that all the queries are in this object called query. But I might have hello in a different file than user and users because uh, a lot of times you split up where you put your resolvers. So because of those two things, I kind of tried to look for a different solution other than uh, this GraphQL prepare. And uh, I also look, took a look, before I quit on it too, I also took a look at GraphQL binding and see if that could be useful uh, since that seems to be the thing that it's using for. Maybe they had an example. Here's the example they show. And notice how here's this binding object and then they do new binding at the bottom and what they pass that is the schema right so here's your schema and that's where you pass in your resolvers and your type defs and then after that 
you can now with this new binding object uh, it has all the types in there but it creates it based on the, the type deaths and the resolvers it looks like in this case also it looks like you could probably pass in the TypeScript types that we just created as well but notice it doesn't really help creating the resolvers themselves and I want something where I can get the types for the re resolvers so the next thing I looked at was this package called GQL2 TypeScript and uh, this I had a lot more success with so let me show you guys that so I'm just gonna go to a different branch and I'm gonna be putting both these branches and all this code on github if you want to check out any of this stuff uh, but I kept this same schema.graphql and uh, it doesn't really need this .graphql config file or anything else all you have to do to get this working is to install uh, it with npm install and then you just run clear this out uh, gql to typescript and then you point it at the file you want so in our case schema.graphql now the default is it just prints it to the console like this so you can either pipe it to a file uh, or there's a dash I think it's dash o yep dash o is the output and uh, you specify the output file so the file I wanted to output it to was the schema.typescript and this looked a lot more promising and the reason for that is it just split everything up into its individual parts so now I can just grab the arguments and use those if I want to so here's how I ended up uh, using these types so if we take a look at index.typescript now and by the way, if you haven't used namespace before, this was actually my first time using uh, declare namespace. I haven't seen this before. I didn't create these, but this is the default. They uh, added namespace like this. Uh, they don't export anything. So you do dot GQL in front of everything. But now I can do hello on query arguments. And this will have the arguments that it is expected on the hello query or the user query and I can just type every single one. Now this is a little bit more work, right? Because uh, I'm having to type each one. It would be kind of nice for me to be able to just do an overarching type up here or something, uh, but I'm not sure if that's feasible or how to actually do that. And uh, I actually noticed we had a little bug. Um, we caught one of the types right here where we're passing null when uh, we, we really can't pass null. So that was a nice little catch it found. But yeah, so now I'm just typing each one um, like that. And I actually don't need to pass any for this parameter. Get rid of that. And the reason for that is because I had that resolver map. And now someone suggested trying out this iResolver. So this is a type that comes from GraphQL Yoga. And I like that, that they gave us a type, but I gave it a try in iResolvers and it didn't seem to work very well with it didn't like me adding these types here the gql types so i just went ahead and uh, left it with resolver map because that seemed to work good but anyway guys let me know if you guys have done this before if you have any ideas about how to get the types working in uh, with graphql and typescript because this seems like a thing that should be pretty easy to do because you you, you know what the types are going to be uh, for the arguments based on the schema because uh, you specify them right here but uh, so far I'm liking this option the best just uh, passing in the types like this um, but if there's a better way do let me know I am pretty new at TypeScript so there probably is a better way to do this than to at every function pass in the arguments but I think this is better than how GraphQL Prepare does it. At least I think it's more useful. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below if you guys have any ideas. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.